Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news with a recap of the week's goings on up to the 9th of September, a summary of calling all devs, round the verse, reverse the verse, the weekly newsletter, roadmap updates, as well as an update to the Crytek v Star Citizen case, the monthly report, and some RSI sub updates. This week's sneak peek in the newsletter was the True Def Pro armor coming in 3.3. Kind of ca quite cartoony, I suppose. It could be the lighting, but I'm not a massive fan of this armor, to be honest. Roadmap updates. A feature's actually been removed from the roadmap, manual repair, though it's likely that's actually just been absorbed into repair V1 that's coming with Alpha 3.6 uh, later next year. 3.3 stuff. So small rest stops, asteroid mining, Star Marine, Arena Commander, Rec Rentals. They've all seen some additional tasks added. Improvements to retrieval and delivery missions and improvements to mining on planetary bodies and AI search behavior are now in their polishing phases. They've seen lots of work finished to them. Uh, the rest of the features for 3.3, for the most part anyway, are making steady progress. 3.3's alpha live release is planned for the 10th of October with a Evocati slash PTU phase potentially a couple of weeks before. 3.4 saw the moons of Arc Corp get a lot of work completed on the roadmap as well, and 3.5 saw some work to the Banny Defender, and 3.6 saw no movement this week. We also have the August monthly report come out, which did highlight some bits that were currently being worked on, as well as what they've been doing over the last few weeks. And I'll, again, just quickly go over a couple of the more interesting points here now. They are almost complete on a spaceport interior, and that has new shop archetypes. One of them being the ship rental store. That is very likely meaning that we will have rentable ships with Alpha UEC in the Persistent Universe, probably in 3.3. What will rentable mean exactly though? Well, I don't actually know for sure, but I'm assuming it will be paying Alpha UEC for a ship for a limited period of time. And if it gets destroyed, then you lose them. That would be my expectation. We'll have to wait and see. They've also started looking at Microtech with its various frosty biomes and domed cities. The dynamic economy is getting a lot of love with economic status of resources to affect pricing of materials and items. Please check out my full summary of the report, links down below. Calling all devs summary. So there are plans to re-add Tessa Bannister, the original quest giver in some form. There will be alarms and alerts for ships and objects coming into range to give you some warning if you're elsewhere on your ship or if you're sort of like AFK and need to wake up. Uh, depressurization in rooms will also have an alert too. There will be security control MFDs giving you internal ship info and allowing you to control um, doors, depressurization, gravity, that sort of stuff. After Stanton is complete, they may look at proximate systems to move on to, so Terra, Pryro or Magnus. And most likely, Stanton has given them a huge range of assets to use for building out other systems. But the next one they choose to complete system-wise will be whatever they decide is the smart choice for evolving their biomes, assets, and gameplay features. It'll be a system that they go, right, we're going for, you know, Terra or whatever allows us to develop our um, tech for this part of the game and cities and, and all this new stuff and all these biomes that we don't have yet that we need to complete the rest of the verse with. That's probably uh, the sort of like direction they'll be going with that. Some around the verse summary bits. So uh, Player Habs, Hangers, Lawville, Signage and Hurston are all getting various work done and fits finished for the 3.3 release. Arc Corps, Moons, Lyria and Waller were shown off in their conceptual stages and it's good that they're already working on stuff beyond 3.3. Drop-off lockers will be in 3.3, allowing for much easier access to pick up and drop off fetch quest type stuff. So you'll be able to take boxes from there for quests, put boxes in there uh, for quests rather than having to faff around with an admin. They are able to very quickly translate animations for characters traversing any appropriate obstacle using motion warping now. The hammerhead is nearing the end of its final art phase. The Banu Defender has been completely blocked out in white box and is now in its grey box phase. Some reverse the verse stuff. So reverse the verse looked at some questions about object container streaming as well as its implementation in 3.3. We will be getting client side OCS or object container streaming, which will reduce RAM usage and potentially give us some good performance gains. However, additional server side tech is also needed to make full use of it. Basically server side object container streaming and that will allow the server to turn off areas and standby areas of um, the system that they're in, standard system or other areas that it's responsible for, loading areas in or out to reduce the load on the server. So this for 3.3 is going to be the first iteration of object container streaming and it's 
going to continue to evolve. This means that servers may be under higher load in the shorter term until the server side object container streaming comes online in the future. In the continuing Crytek versus CIG RSI lawsuit, CIG put in another partial motion to dismiss for the new Crytek complaint. Basically, the complaint is CIG are promoting a competing game engine. Crytek's claim uses some creative interpretation of the wording promote from part of their GLA, their game license agreement, as when taken in context with the rest of the contract, it looks like it's referring to protecting Crytek from CIG building a game engine and then selling it or licensing it out, literally building a competing game engine that other people would then buy off them. We should know more on the 12th of October, at which time there is also a scheduling conference about the case to plan out any discovery, which would be requesting documents and depositions, among other bits. That may take place. And finally, some RSI subscriber stuff. So flair for RSI subscribers this month is helmets. Uh, red ones for uh, standard subscribers and a red and a blue one for Emperor subscribers. All RSI subs also have access to the Blade this month too. And that's it for the news and recap this time. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway, this time for September. It's a Saber Raven, a game package, and a CitizenCon digital goodies pack. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos during the month. If you'd like to support the channel further, please consider joining on YouTube as a sponsor or via Patreon. Also, if you're looking to get or upgrade a gaming PC, then consider Shadow instead. Shadow is a subscription-based cloud gaming PC service that can turn most devices, phone, laptop, PC, tablet and more into a powerful gaming pc via the internet links to more info in the description for that and if you do decide to try it then use the code board gamer to get a discount on the service shadow is now available in germany as well now and they've just got a new data center in amsterdam too thanks for watching guys i look forward to your comments take care and i'll see you in the verse